that piercing noise can mean the difference between life and death in some communities. You'd think a tornado siren in your town would be a necessity, but it's not. Is that an unnecessary risk? TV5's Ashland Hill profiles a town where the sirens are not required, but have saved lives there anyway. High winds, downed power lines, downed trees. Severe weather in Michigan, it can happen any day at any time. But what if your community isn't fully prepared? There was no sirens then that went off. Kathy Wick has lived in Bay County for 30 years. She can remember 19 years ago when one woman was killed after a tree fell on her home in Pinconning. It was during the night, so the sirens probably wouldn't have went off. You know, they probably would have, you know, known to take cover. The tree smashed into her bedroom as the mother of three slept. Wind gusts reported at 80 miles per hour in Bay County that night, but there were no tornado sirens in Pinconning at the time. The year was 1998. Fast forward to 2017, where Bay County has made massive emergency upgrades. We've slowly expanded to the point where we have 19 sirens throughout the county. We have about a 75 to 80 percent coverage of the population. Bay County Emergency Manager Ryan Mann says Bay County is rated as a low-risk area for severe weather systems like tornadoes, but he still thinks sirens are necessary. There is risk. As a matter of fact, the last tornado we had was just last last year, uh, just north of Pin County. It was an EF zero. Luckily, it touched down in a um, fairly, fairly rural area. We were set there watching it. It was going to come right down on us. Kathy Wick says she remembers that tornado all too well. She owns and operates the Hair Shack in Pinconning and says it started off as a typical day of work. You know, you're kind of busy in the shop. You really don't pay a lot of attention to, you know, your you're working with your customers and stuff. But one of the newly added sirens began to blare its warning. Wick tells me she's incredibly grateful that that tornado siren is located directly across the street from her business. It's within walking distance, and she says that proximity is what leads to safety when they don't realize how bad the weather is truly becoming. So we hightailed it, got my clients and got in the car and went down to my daughter's house to have the basement. But the intended use of a tornado siren might surprise you. Man says the sound of a siren is not meant to be your sole warning. We actually call it an outdoor public warning system is what it's uh, the name of it because that is what it is meant to do is to warn you if you're outside away from your radio away from your TV and you're up outside enjoying the great outdoors and there's an imminent threat. It is meant to warn you that that threat is on its way and for you to seek shelter immediately. So we wanted to know why some communities still don't have a tornado siren system. We talked with Rich Pullman, the warning coordination meteorologist for the Detroit Pontiac Bureau of the National Weather Service, and he says a siren can cost anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars each. And some rural communities just don't think the benefit outweighs the cost. But Pullman says there are many other ways to keep informed. Watching television, listening to radio. Our cell phones now have the wireless emergency alert system, so you can get the warnings on there, check the internet. And the weather radio is a great way to have it. It's having your own personal warning alarm system, warning siren in your house by having a weather radio. With this I-Team report in Bay County, Ashland Hill, WNEM, TV5.